Welcome back to Military Update Channel. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is already one of the most destructive and lethal wars in recent memory, from the shelling of cities to the use of thermobaric vacuum weapons. That's led experts and civilians, alike, to wonder what, if NATO and the US become directly involved in the conflict, nuclear war between Washington and Moscow might look like. Here, Military Update examines two classic nuclear attack scenarios, a counterforce strike and a counter-value strike. The counterforce scenario examines what might happen if Russia attacked America's nuclear arsenal with its own in an attempt to neutralize America's nuclear-capable bombers, submarines, and land-based missiles. The second, more devastating counter-value scenario involves an all-out use of nukes to destroy the United States' ability to wage war with the side effect of reducing American society to a pre-industrial level of development. Before we begin, we should note that neither of the scenarios is likely to occur in our lifetimes. Unlike conventional war, nuclear war is not something that happens out of the blue. Both the United States and Russia believe that a nuclear war is not winnable and should never be fought. Both countries also subscribe to a policy of assured destruction, meaning any attack on either nation would result in the attacker's destruction. Assured destruction is a powerful disincentive to using even just one nuclear weapon, let alone using hundreds in an apocalyptic attack. Still, nuclear war is not impossible. The United States has been steadfast in its refusal to become directly involved in the Russo-Ukrainian war and for good reason. Under Article 5 of NATO's founding treaty, Washington has extended the protection of its nuclear umbrella to NATO nations, which means the US would treat a nuclear attack on those countries in the same way it would an attack on American soil. In other words, it protects them by promising to retaliate in kind to any nuclear strikes on their territory. However, the U.S. does not have the same security relationship with Ukraine as it does with NATO member nations and allies such as South Korea and Japan. As a result, Ukraine has found itself with no country willing to actively defend it against nuclear-armed Russia for fear of entering into a nuclear war. Putin's Russia, seeing Ukraine as alone and vulnerable, decided to attack. In our scenario, the President of the United States has ordered the U.S. military to intervene on Ukraine's behalf, destroying Russian ground forces units in the field and downing Russian fighter jets. Five U.S. Army brigades, backed up by fighters, bombers, and cruise missiles, drive from Poland to Kiev, then on to Donsk. The intervention threatens to upset Putin's chessboard and injects a new force into the conflict that could beat Russia's army in the field. While this might result in a conventional victory, things could rapidly take a sinister turn. If U.S. forces routed their Russian counterparts and neared the Ukrainian-Russian border, Russia might target them with tactical nuclear weapons, typically 20,000 tons of TNT or less, to stop their advance. Once that happens, all bets are off. The United States might choose not to retaliate in order to avoid escalating, or it might well decide to retaliate with tactical nuclear weapons of its own. At that point, either side could opt to massively escalate, reasoning that the first side to use larger, more powerful strategic nuclear weapons could gain a survival advantage over the other, launching a first strike so devastating it destroys most of the enemy's strategic arsenal. All-out war In our scenario, we'll look at a surprise nuclear first strike that leads to an all-out war. One country decides it has exhausted all other options and must destroy enemy nuclear forces before it can use them. We'll assume Russia strikes first. U.S. Strategic Early Warning Forces abruptly detect SS-19 intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs, each loaded with a nuclear-armed Avangard hypersonic glide vehicle, launched from silos near Orenburg, Russia. 
The six hypersonic weapons are not particularly accurate but loaded with devastating two megaton warheads, two million tons of TNT, so there's no need for pinpoint precision. Avangard hypersonic glide vehicles rain down on early warning radar bases across North America, destroying the sensors needed to detect the main surprise attack. Moments later, Russia launches its entire force of 304 land-based ICBMs carrying a total of approximately 1,183 thermonuclear warheads. The ICBMs would target America's nukes, including the 400 ICBM silos sprinkled across the western United States, nuclear bomber bases in Missouri and Louisiana, and missile submarine bases at Kings Bay, Georgia, and Kitsap, Washington. Each location would likely receive a minimum of two nukes in case the first weapon fails to detonate. The nuclear surprise attack, known as a first strike, would primarily target America's land-based nuclear arsenal. Montana, Wyoming, and North Dakota would receive at least 800 nuclear strikes between them. Cities like Seattle, uncomfortably close to Joint Base Kitsap, the home of the Pacific Fleet's ballistic missile submarines, would likely take some damage. The strike, known as a counterforce strike, would be concentrated away from major population and industrial centers. Places like New York City, the San Francisco Bay Area, and entire regions of the U.S. would be spared. Such an attack would likely kill no more than 20 million Americans and leave much of the country intact. Most importantly, the strike would preserve Washington's ability to communicate with its nuclear forces. Moscow would then open a dialogue with Washington, stating that the bulk of American nuclear weapons, land-based missiles and bombers have been destroyed, but America's infrastructure and cities are still intact. Russia's leadership would then warn that any attempt to retaliate would unleash the rest of the country's nuclear weapons, killing millions more and destroying the U.S. as a military, political and economic entity. How bad would it get? At this point, the United States could surrender and face an uncertain future, or it could fight back. Fighting back would mean launching what remained of its ICBMs and any bombers that survived, using them to hunt down remaining Russian nuclear weapons. Bombers are particularly useful in this situation as they could be used to actively hunt down what remained of Russia's ICBMs, particularly those like the SS-27 mounted on 16-wheeled missile transport trucks. The Navy would begin hunting Russian missile submarines, including those that might be parked off the east and west coasts of the US, armed with nuclear-tipped cruise missiles. Would a nuclear counterattack achieve anything? In our scenario, the Joint Chiefs of Staff argue that the United States has nothing to lose by trying, and in doing so, could attempt to reduce the overall damage of an inevitable second strike. After all, there is little reason to trust Russia at this point. The United States launches a counterstrike, but it is seriously hobbled by a lack of forces, with most of the U.S. Strategic Command's Minuteman III Eichbums and B-2 and B-52 bombers destroyed in the first strike. Russia launches the remainder of its nukes, this time with an eye toward the destruction of anything that could contribute to the war effort. The strike targets America's remaining military bases, industry, energy, communications, and transportation facilities, practically anything that makes 21st century life worth living. Cities are not targeted as population centers, but buildings, complexes, and other facilities inside them would be destroyed without mercy. The result would be near total devastation with global consequences. An attack on just one city in the U.S. could cause fatalities in the hundreds of thousands and just as many injuries. Tara Drizdenko, director of the Global Security Program at the Union of Concerned Scientists, tells Popular Mechanics, fires generating soot could block sunlight, possibly for decades, causing global cooling and shortening growing seasons, causing worldwide food insecurity.